Earlier today, I went live about the automated investigations on the creditor side, right? And the collectors. Now, I told you I would be back with the proof and this is that video. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm referring to the automated system for investigations, not on the bureau side, but on the creditor side, right? The creditors and the collectors. You see, most people think that it's actual people that are investigating and this is just not so. So if you want to see the documentation, you go down into the description and among the other links, such as for the one-to-one -one credit consultation for me to take over your file or the uh, free subscriber hub where you can get access to a ton of awesome content, you will also find the link to this three-page document and this is information taken from my course, all right? Now, for those of you that are working, that are driving, that are walking, that are at the gym, we are going to go over this, not line by line basically, but I'm gonna read it with you um, just because you might not be looking at the screen, okay? So, automated investigations on the creditor side, and you can pause right here to go download this document and read it with me, or you can look at the screen, or just listen to me and access it later, all right? So, for large creditors, eOscar includes a batch interface that enables them to receive and respond to large numbers of disputes via web services, which means that they can do so without any human intervention at all. All right, and this is taken directly from eOscar.org, okay? Um, this is also the FTC report to Congress on the FCRA dispute process from August 2006. So the creditor's computers could, in theory, simply receive the file, look up an account in their records, and respond as verified if they found the account and do it all automatically via computer software. When a creditor is automating their investigations, it is impossible for the investigation to consist of more than just checking the dispute information against their records. So for example, a creditor re uh, reports a fraudulently created account for a consumer who happens to be a victim of identity theft. And pausing there, this is actually a, an example that I used earlier when I was live. Okay, so the information is reported based on the creditor's records. The consumer sees the error on their credit report and disputes the same account in the usual, uh, the usual fashion. When the creditor receives the dispute from the bureaus via eOscar, they check their records for a matching account. Remember, we were talking about the matching algorithm and uh, the formulas that they use. If they find it, the item gets, quote unquote, verified. Of course, they will find it because the incorrect reporting originated from their records in the first place, right? Now, in the Bennett testimony, it was said this way. Nearly every major furnisher who has been deposed has confessed to a policy of automated investigations in which the consumer has almost no hope of obtaining relief. Did you hear me? In which the consumer has almost no hope of obtaining relief. The furnishers merely proofread the form from the CRA and match it to the data within the computer's account screen. There is no other means by which to verify and correct a credit reporting dispute once the error has worked its way into the furnisher's computer account record. None of the major furnishers of which I am aware reviews original documentation or, excuse me, documents or paper records. You see, if you go back to even as far back as 2017, I let you know that you'd be wasting your time if you forward any documentation. I also let you know if you dispute online, documentation gets, does not get forwarded over to the creditor. I also let you know that when you dispute, when you send in documentation, it doesn't get sent over to the creditor. Okay, and here's proof from someone who used to work with, I believe it was Equifax, right? So the things that I tell you are not just off the top of my head and I'm not just making up. I can prove every single thing that I say. All right, back to this. Even if creditors aren't automating the process entirely, the term investigation is probably a little generous. Here's another sample from the Bennett testimony. In pretrial depositions and in evidence at trial, MBNA admitted that its sole procedure for handling consumer disputes under the FCRA was to compare the CRA data to its own summary of the account in its computer, uh, excuse me, in its computer that itself was the subject of the consumer's dispute. 
pausing there. I told you about this. I have told you probably 20 times over the past year and a half that this is how it works. It's one computer talking to another computer. I even drew out a graphic to explain it. I've done charts to explain it. I've made slides to explain it. I've drawn little stick figures to explain it. And here's the proof, again, from a lawsuit, from testimony, okay? Back to this. MBNA's 12 investigators were expected to perform an average of 250 investigations per eight hour day. They were never to consult original documents and were not provided any means by which to determine if the account summary within their computer was in fact accurate. Did you hear that? That's absolutely crazy, okay? And I'm not gonna read this next part very simply because um, we're not going over that information from my course. And if you do wanna check out my course, the link to that is in the description, all right? The consequence of automation. So the main consequence of e-Oscar and dispute on the automation is that, to put it bluntly, consumers end up getting the shaft. Automation in itself is one tool that the bureaus use to cut costs and increase profits, and it's just another reason that a need for credit repair experts exists, right? So automation makes things easy for the bureaus, but complicates the repair process for average Joe consumers, or as I call, as I call them, Jane, you know, average Jane and Joe, who understandably don't understand why the dispute process, uh, excuse me, the disputes that they just sent with accompanying documentation to prove their case just came back as verified. All right, so let's get a little bit more into eOscar and dispute automation, and um, you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. Now we get to the super juicy stuff that you have been waiting for. All right, so as we've already mentioned earlier, eOscar features a batch interface for larger creditors. So here's a quote from the eOscar website. The batch interface is an exciting product offering that allows data furnishers with large volumes of automated consumer dispute verification, ACDV requests, to receive a batch file in an XML format. Once the file is delivered, each data furnisher can further automate the development of responses to ACDVs. The development effort by the data furnisher to achieve the benefits of the batch interface will vary depending on the data furnisher's internal business and compliance requirements. For example, one data furnisher may choose to auto-populate the response fields automatically for staff review prior to submission. This business plan would save your staff the time and potential errors of data entry. Another data furnisher may elect to automate only certain response types. For example, a data furnisher may only populate excuse me, automate, delete responses and require that staff review responses on all other disputes. And this source is eoscar.org slash automated, what is that, bl dot htm. <laughs> so yeah, no. With larger furnitures in particular, the likelihood of a real investigation is slim. So it should be within reach to show with some amount of certainty that creditors did not do their job with um, with which to verify the accuracy of an account, all right? So what the term verified really means, regardless of the furnisher, is that the furnisher responded to the creditor with a guilty verdict, so to speak. Is it verified because the creditor said so? That's it? Or is it? So as you can see, every single thing that I tell you, I can back up with the actual proof and the facts, okay? so. That's, this is this absolutely blows my mind that people still think that there's actual other people that are investigating their disputes. And then you wonder why these things take so damn long. You wonder why it's so difficult to get off your late payments and your collections and your charge-offs and anything banking related. We're talking about big ass banks that don't want to lose money. And this is one of the ways obviously, that they're not going to lose money. They don't even investigate because, again, it's one computer talking to another computer about their matching records, okay? The bureaus are reporting what the creditors are giving them, so obviously the information is going to be the same, okay? And these two pages that I am reading from, I will also put with the other three and post the link for you to download this. Um, now, if you want to learn more about how this works, this is taken directly from my course. You can go down into the description and access that. But we're going to talk about more about this later. 
But if you really want to hear what I have to say, then you can go to capiche.fm slash ask dash Kristen to join in on my live podcast. Otherwise, as I mentioned, if you need help, you want me to take over your file, see if I can take over your file and get you better results because I know these things and I know how it works and I don't get frustrated and I do get the results, then hey, I'll see if I can help. Use the link in the description to schedule a call. Otherwise, go down, check it out. I've got a ton of resources for you so that you can learn how to do factual basis disputes and actually get the results. All right. Now, if you found value in this video, and I don't know how you could not find value in this video, just saying, uh, hit that like, let me know. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe and smash that bell for notifications. Because even if you are subscribed, if you don't hit that bell, you're not going to be notified when I post a new video. All right. So I'm going to get this up on, um, you know, into post-production. So I will see you later. Uh, I might go live. I might not. I might do my live podcast. I might not. And I might just see you tomorrow. Who knows? Um, Have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Take care of each other and be well. Bye.